So lost in the mess of the Vikings debut against the greasy, grimy Green Bay Packers was the fact that the Minnesota Fighting Vikings running game was actually pretty damn good. And this highly taunt, highly touted uh, running game, which Zim Ross even run for his team in an era of quarterbacks, but yeah, whatever. But the freshly paid dynamic Dalvin Cook had two touchdowns as well as ripping off uh, some chunk yardage. Plus Alexander Madison uh, peeled off a couple of nice power runs in his own right. And the problem was... The Vikings never had the ball. They went full Lance Armstrong. They never had it. Uh, and uh, their time of possession, uh, 18 minutes, 44 seconds, is the lowest in NFL history since they started counting. Uh, how absolutely insane is that? And, and yeah, we're consistently playing from multiple scores down. That's not what you want to do. That's not where you want to be if you are a run-first team. Uh, being a run-first team, controlling the clock, controlling field position, everything that Mike Zimmer wants to do. Also, you ideally want to have the lead, which comes in handy in football, or you don't want to be in extreme desperation catch-up mode, and then you have to alter your game plan. Uh, so the, the first drive was great. It had all your scripted plays. It was a hallmark of uh, Gary Kubiak marching 75 yards in eight plays. A couple of nice throws uh, from Kirk Cousins. Then Dalvin and Madison both getting some carries, punching positive yards every single time. Both look great. Both running with power. The offensive line was looking good, too. Uh, the Minnesota Movement Company is back, baby. Woo! And then, and then you punch it in for a touchdown, and it's like, all right. Off to the races. Bring it on, you stupid, greasy, grimy Green Bay Packers. It's going to be a hell of a great game. And then, no. Then not so much. Then, yeah, the nice goal line stand. Backed up in your own end zone. Kubiak pulls a big boner, uh, calling that uh, long developing play action pass play. Not great. And then it, it, the Vikings got off uh, schedule. They got off script and everything went to pot, right? Uh, and yes, uh, most of Madison's yardage came on, came in garbage time as well as the final play uh, before the half. Because, you know, initially, this bugs me every single time. So before the half, if you have like under a minute left, teams will usually run a draw or some kind of run play, just sort of a throwaway play. But if you get positive yardage on that play, which Madison did, he scampered for 21 yards, then it's like, all right, now we'll try. Yeah, we weren't going to try before, but now we'll try. So instead of just taking a knee, uh, we're just ah, we'll try now. And then Cousins had a uh, cold-blooded connection to uh, Kyle Rudolph. Vikings get kicked a field goal is one of the few like um, uh, signs of life uh, outside of that first drive uh, in the first half for the Vikings when they're on the field for about 30 seconds, right? And, and obviously off script, but... You see what the Vikings want to do uh, by how they operate early in the game. They want to run the piss out of the football. They want to control the clock. They want to give this young defense a breather, which they did not get on Sunday. And the offensive line get a little swagger going, start selling that play action, and it'll be dynamic. And then Kirk Cousins, comfortable back there. Looked damn good yesterday, by the way. Uh, had a little bit of pocket awareness, a little bit of Kirk G3. Running quarterback. Who knew that of the 2012 uh, Washington football team, Kirk Cousins would be the best running quarterback still in the game? Just nah. Uh, but he's back there. Uh, obviously, can drop dimes uh, when he wants to, and then life will be good. Uh, this is what the Vikings want to do. They want to get Dalvin um, 25 plus touches a game. They want to work Madison in there as well. I have a nice thunder and thunder combination because there's not really a lightning. You, even though like they're both quick, you know, Dalvin certainly is the best combination of thunder and lightning in the game. IMO. Uh, but the problem is this team is not designed to come back from multiple scores down. Like they are not the chiefs. So this is something to watch for uh, the Vikings. Will they be able to impose their will against the Colts, against the Titans, against the Texans, against uh, uh, week five against the Falcons. It certainly is possible that if the Vikings can still have a lead or stay within two scores, they can play Vikings ball. And we've seen before, Vikings ball is extremely fun to watch, especially when Dalvin Cook got that big-ass contract. He's going to get the rock outside zone, uh, single cut and go, as well as didn't really see it uh, yesterday either, but both of them uh, can be factors in, in the receiving game. Also sprinkling, sprinkling some Mike Boone and Amir Abdullah. And keep hope alive, keep the faith. I mean, I, honestly, we haven't really seen – Outside of that first drive, uh, a really good look about the, uh, of the Vikings' offense. Like we've seen desperation catch up mode in the second half. We saw ineptitude uh, with the safety and then with the lazy Kirk Cousins interception. But what this team truly wants to be, what they are capable of doing up front, if this offensive line can get things together and if they can stay on script and on track, 
they can be the best running team in the league. Like you look at Tennessee, you look at Baltimore, they make no apologies for who they are on offense. And I think the Vikings want to do that too. So don't let one game just completely ruin your thoughts about the Vikings offense because it was less an indictment of the offense than it was definitely on the defense. But another topic for another day. Uh, your thoughts, Dalvin Madison. Woo. Let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Want to support that work? Pull some of the Venmo. But until next time, skull. Production value.